San Francisco Public Library presents Author Talk, an interview program featuring library staff in conversation with some of today's most fascinating authors. On today's program, middle school liaison librarian Susan Harlow talks with Joe Cottonwood, author of The Adventures of Boone Barnaby. Hello, I'm Susan Harlow, middle school outreach librarian for San Francisco Public Library. And today on Author Talk, we're very lucky to have Joe Cottonwood with us. He's the author of two highly acclaimed books for middle school readers. One is Danny Ain't, and the other is The Adventures of Boone Barnaby. Now, I know that when I first read The Adventures of Boone Barnaby, it had a starred School Library Journal review, and Danny Ain't was just listed as a distinguished book for the Association of Children's Librarians in the Bay Area. And what to me shines through in these books is your tremendous respect for kids. Well, thank you for saying that. Oh. Um, I, try to, I try to be respectful uh -huh. of kids. That's one of my goals as a writer. I, I think it's so many books you read, it seems like they're written down to the kids. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know what this says about me, but I think I just naturally write um, at a level that's, that's right for them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to write adult books, and I found that most of the people writing those books, I mean, reading those books were, were younger. Uh, like, I, it, was mm -hmm. a, it was selling, um, I, it was a book for adults, and it was advertised in the regular adult um, media, but um, it would turn out it was 18-year-olds and 17-year-olds who were reading it. And, um, then I started writing for children, and I had to make a decision. Am I going to write down, or am I going to uh, not? And uh, I figured, I, I think there's something in me that just speaks to that level anyway. And so uh, it's, it seems to work for me. I think the best books for children write, write to them. And you have your own children, right? Yes. And is that what prompted you to begin writing for them, do you think? Or? Oh, yeah. Um, I. My oldest child was about in fourth grade when I started writing uh, my mm -hmm. first children's book. And basically, I w he was in my mind. He, he, I was writing it for him in a way. Uh, I, I, whenever I, an episode was in my mind, I would just think, would, how, would, how would Jesse like this? I mean, how would he react to it? And he was my mm -hmm. test case. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't do that anymore. And in fact, he's now um, about to go to college, and it mm -hmm. wouldn't be very appropriate. But. Uh, I've gotten the hang of it now where I don't think I need uh, that. But that's what got me started. Mm -hmm. And I was reading to my children all the time. Uh, it, it sounds arrogant to say this, but I was um, reading a lot of books to my children that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd pick them out of the library. Mm -hmm. and it was, you know, the Care Bearers and all this garbage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, I can do better than this, you know. Uh -huh. And it, I say it was arrogant because I've since discovered there's hundreds of wonderful books for children, uh -huh. and I just didn't know about them, and, and now I do. And, and if I had known about them then, I may not have ever gotten started writing, so maybe it's a good thing. So we're glad you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think something that, that struck me, too, in these two books particularly, I, I, my thought is they're placed in La Honda, where you live, that that is a loosely disguised La Honda, yeah, that the town that, that. They're, that they're from, um, and that there seems to be such a strong sense of ethics that these kids themselves have. In Danny Ain't, it seems that Danny is about making choices in his life and knowing the way to be in a world where he has no adult supervision, where he's alone because his father has had to go away. And in Boone Barnaby, it seems that Boone is trying to figure out also what is the right path to follow. And it seems to me each of your characters faces those kinds of choices. Could you talk about that a little? I think that it ends up that way because that's what's most interesting to me, and mm -hmm. I think that's what growing up is all about, is learning mm -hmm. to make choices and, and hoping that when these kids get older, they'll make the right choices. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, growing up is a, just a series of moral dilemmas and learning how to, uh, how to handle them, and mm -hmm. that's what life is, really. And it's most interesting to me when kids are just learning that, um, and I try to dramatize that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I remember when my son, I said, I, my son was in fourth grade when I started writing Boone Barnaby. He had a teacher that year who used to say, life isn't fair. Because the kids were always saying, that's not fair, you know, mm -hmm. that's what kids do. And uh, that was his answer. And uh, so I just took that as a starting point. Um, you know, is life fair? Or how do mm -hmm. we make it fair? Or should we make it fair? Or, mm -hmm. 
um, sort of Boone's uh, rallying cry mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And his soccer coach, I remember, in Boone Barnaby is the one who says, life's not fair. Right. Doesn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you bring that in there, too. Right. Yeah. I found that unique, in a sense, in your book that, well, I do think the best children's books deal with this, but that they really do deal with ethics from the point of view of the kid in a very sort of true-to-life way. You know, I, I, I thought that was a wonderful thing to read. Well, thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. but I would say all the good children's books mm -hmm. are, are in that same vein. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the more adventurous ones, like um, uh, Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, what that there, there's moral choices being made there too. Only mm -hmm. they're often more violent, but or uh, highly dramatic. <laughs> you know, highly dramatic. Yeah. But uh, what yeah. interests you in the long run is those choices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to my next question, which is that one of your adult novels, which is Frank City Goodbye, which I recently read, it shows, this is what I think it showed, it showed to me sort of a coming of age um, in 1964 in San Francisco. And to me it seemed like San Francisco, when San Francisco was just on the brink of the whole for lack of a better phrase, peace and love, um, flower power, hippie dub hippie movement. Explosion. Yeah. Explosion, mm -hmm. yes. And then it seems to me in that book there's an innocence that's there that's sort of disflowered. Now, what I wanted to ask you, I'd love to hear anything you have to say about that book, and also, it's now 30 years later. It's now 1994. If you could talk about a little bit about that sort of coming of age at that time and what might be different for your son, for who is 18, for example, now. Any thoughts you have? Boy, um, it's very different now, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I wrote Frank City Goodbye, um, I was just trying to tell what had happened mm -hmm. um, and trying to make it sound reasonable. You know, the hippies are so misportrayed in the media, and they mm -hmm. still are, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so rare to see a hippie character or read a about a hippie character, particularly in the movies, it's just awful on television. You, the hit, you know, they throw in a hippie sometimes, and it's just some weird guy or mm -hmm. weird woman, um, and they, you can't relate to it. And yet, I, having lived through it, I related to it, and I know it wasn't just um, beads and, and flowers and, yeah. and strange. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first time somebody went like that to me. I, I thought, what? <laughs> what was uh -huh. that? And it turns out it, it, they'd seen it on television, you know, huh. and it spread like wildfire. Yeah. And in about two days, the whole country was doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think some of the last people to know about it were the hippies themselves. Hmm. Uh, so what I was trying to do with the book was describe how some people were, who were, were there at the beginning um, saw this thing just mushroom way beyond anything they could possibly have imagined and out of their control. And mm -hmm. it just was the right thing at the time, I guess. And there's a line, in fact, I used, I believe it was in Boone Barnaby, looking back on that, where the, he, Boone is talking to his father about drugs. And his, Boone says, how could anyone be stupid enough to take drugs? And his father says, um, you know, doctors take drugs, basketball players take drugs, anybody can be stupid. And he also, Boone said, um, the, something disparaging about the hippies, I forget the exact word, and his father said, the hippies believed in peace and love. What's, what's, what's so bad about peace and love? Mm -hmm which is a line I've always been wanting to say, yeah. you know, so I got to yeah. say it there. And it goes back to Frank City Goodbye, which is a book, which actually I cringe a little bit when I think about people reading it now, because mm. it's a book I wish I had rewritten. Um, first of all, it needs a new title. No one can remember the title. And secondly, but m and much more importantly, um, it just needed a, a rewrite. Uh, there are certain things in there that I wish I could change. You talked about an innocence being deflowered. Mm -hmm. and, um, I wish I had kept some of that innocence or made it more innocent because uh, it doesn't exactly f fit with my memory of mm -hmm. what uh, happened. And, um, I guess I'm talking about the sexual relations in mm -hmm. particular. I, I, they, there was a hardness to them that mm -hmm. um, I, would, I didn't intend mm -hmm. and that if I had reread it with, after it had cooled off a little bit and went back, I know I would have changed it. And some of my friends read it and, and said, you know, that, that doesn't sound right. That's not you and that's not what was going on. And, now it embarrasses me that that's out there and I can't change it, you know. Oh, I, I, really? But that's something yeah. you have to learn to live with. Yeah. I, I couldn't put it down and I thought it, you know, me reading it just in the last year for the first time ever and having lived in San Francisco close to that time also, 
maybe not having had that experience, but having lived here around then, I thought I had so many levels going on, you know? There were so many things. There was this couple coming to San Francisco. They can't arrive by machine, so they walk across the bridge, and then meeting these other people and these sort of magical adventures that they have, but then also that something really is changing, and something changes for them, too. I just thought it was a great story. Well, maybe I should reread it, you know? I haven't looked at it in a long time. Yeah. Um, you also asked how it, uh, you know, how things are different yeah. now and how my mm -hmm. children would, you know, they haven't read the book and I'm mm -hmm. dreading mm. the day when they do, in a way. Uh, it's Frank it's, City, it's <laughs> a Frank book, too, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, the world is so different now, mm -hmm. and, but I, 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 part of me thinks it's time for another flowering of that type mm -hmm. and I'm just waiting for it to happen. I, I'm surprised it's taken 30 years. I thought it would have mm -hmm. happened a long time before. Maybe with not without, all, not with all the drugs. I mean, we've learned from that. Mm -hmm. But um, other ways, um, a softening and, a, and a, I mean, kids are growing up today so pressured to succeed and, and so worried about getting jobs, mm -hmm. which is the exact opposite of how you know the the strange era that I grew up in and, and that is described in that book, where you know you weren't worried about getting a job. That was the last thing on your mm -hmm. mind and you, you did strange work, whatever happened to come your way. Um, I, I'd like to see kids back off a little bit and relax a little bit and mm -hmm. get back to that, and yet I can understand why they don't, because times aren't as easy as they were back then. And I, I guess it was an affluent time coming to a climax in the 60s, and mm -hmm. it's not so affluent now. People don't have that luxury to just drop out and live on their parents' money and mm -hmm. uh, act crazy for a few years. Where's the parents now? You know, yeah, <laughs> so know. <laughs> we know we know what our times are like economically. You know, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I think what also struck me in both Danny Ain and Boone Barnaby is that there's a hearkening back to those times uh, in the adults in these novels. The very the thing that we spoke about a moment ago about Boone and his father having the conversation about marijuana. And I distinctly remember the hippie line because I was going to talk to some kids in the school about that because Boone's father calls the soccer coach a hippie and Boone's reaction is, don't call him that. He thinks it's a pejorative term. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting, I thought, that, that we see that view. And then, of course, Danny's father being a Vietnam vet who is having these flashbacks. And I think that what I'm trying to say here is that there's sort of a, you've taken moments from that time of the 60s that have sort of bled down or, or we are, inf they inform our times today. Mm -hmm. But in a darker way, it seems to me, and perhaps that's the whole Vietnam era that happened immediately following the events of Frank City Goodbye. You know? Well, those are the two great events of the 60s, the, yeah. the hippie thing and the um, Vietnam, and they worked in totally opposite directions mm -hmm. in many ways. And I, I think we're feeling the effects of Vietnam more than the effects of the hippies now, which is sad. Mm -hmm. I don't know when we'll grow out of that. It's sort of a chain reaction. Things keep on affecting the, the and the generations that follow. I mean. I see it in these kids in, in this book. I mean, I see this is Danny Ain't is Danny's story, but it's, he's very much influenced by what his father went through. Well, that's yeah. part of the way I write. I, I, I don't intend to do this, but I always seem to write about the relationship between a child and his parent, mm. or at least one of his parents. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I'm writing about the typical children's book, I think, is about children reacting, interacting with other children. And I think my typical book seems to be a, a child not only reacting with other children, but his relationship with an, at least one very significant adult, sometimes more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in Boone Barnaby, there's his soccer coach mm -hmm. is very important to, mm -hmm. to Boone, and so is his father. Mm -hmm. And Danny, um, Danny's father is very influential to him, even though he's hardly in the book. I was going to say, <laughs> He disappears a, in the first yeah. chapter. But um, That's a pretty marvelous bit of writing then, to write about a child and his parent, and the parent is absent. Yeah, That's but he's thinking about his father the whole yes. time he's gone. Oh, yeah. And, and then Danny, because his father's gone, is looking for other role models mm -hmm. and, and trying out different things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really true to life because that's mm -hmm. basically what kids are doing. They're watching how adults behave and they're picking mm -hmm. and choosing among what they see. Mm -hmm. And all, whether we like it or not, we are being role models all the time to these kids. And uh, in many ways, 
I, I sometimes wish we weren't. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a big responsibility, isn't it, to know we're being watched. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, you know, I think the lives of these, these kids, especially this book here, Danny Ain't, it seemed to me he's sort of, perhaps not exactly on the brink of adulthood, but he's, he's starting to make some adult choices. And again, this has a little bit to do with the last question I asked you about what is it now that, that informs those choices as opposed to, say, the young man in Frank's City Goodbye in 1964. What are the differences? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you've, you've said a little bit about it. Uh, economically, things were different. Maybe sure. it was a more hopeful time. Oh, it was. It, 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 you know, it's hard to even remember the youth culture of the 60s when it, just knowing that someone else was your age was enough to, to make you instantly think he was on my side, even though you know, it didn't work that way when we, you really got to know them. Uh, but I remember hitchhiking around the country and, and uh, it was like this big brotherhood and sisterhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't feel that walking around the streets now, you know. This, everyone's mm -hmm. sort of choosing little uh, pockets of, of um, behavior to uh, emulate. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be a punk or you could be a, um, you know, heavy metal kind of kid or, or mm -hmm. you know, an athlete. Or, um, but it doesn't, the kids, I don't see them all feeling a, a universal um, brotherhood a and sisterhood. Bond, yeah, yes. a common bond anymore. And it's more like every man for himself. And, and I don't know how, where to generalize from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something I haven't thought through. Mm -hmm. Would you want your question. kids fit checking across the country? No, but uh, they, probably, they may do it. Yeah. I don't know. It, I used to, it was incredibly dangerous. I mean, I did it, and I can think of some, you know, I must have nine lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't <laughs> think it's gotten any safer. It's probably mm -hmm. gotten worse. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, I wouldn't be wild about the idea. Mm -hmm. But that yeah. may be because you're a parent. Oh, sure. You know? Sure. Not, not, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking not necessarily because times are horrifying and scary, but because you're a parent. Oh, yeah. You're going to worry. You oh, yeah. Know? I'm going to worry. I worry all the yeah. time. I mean. <laughs> what can I do? Yeah. I'm a parent. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to ask you something else about um, Frank City Goodbye. I read that it became it was written in in the early '80s, is it or late '70s? Yeah, it's '78, '79. Okay. It was probably written. And then I read that it was used as a textbook, as a as a contemporary history of the hate. And I found that absolutely fascinating at San Francisco State. Yes, there's a professor at San Francisco State. I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was using mm -hmm. it as one of the required texts in his history of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I took that as a great compliment because yes. um, he was basically saying that I'd gotten the details right on the history. Mm -hmm. um, Even though you uh, felt it was a little hard edged in some ways, maybe. Well, that was, a, you know, Personally, emotionally. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, the, the physical facts I must have gotten right. And mm -hmm. I did a lot of research on that book. In a way, it was a historical novel, even though I wrote yeah. it very recently after the fact. Uh, it's funny how quickly some of this information vanishes. There was, I don't know if there still is, a library in San Francisco. Well, you're a librarian, you mm -hmm. may know about this. Now, what's the name of it? The Michael Aldrich Library or something like that? Or, no. Maybe Michael Aldrich was the name of the librarian. <laughs> oh, me. Was it's it been a, a long time. It's a library devoted to. Um, Drugs, basically. Oh, really? And because it was yeah. devoted to drugs, it had a lot of information about the hippies oh, really? in its files. And it was still functioning. It had a room somewhere where mm -hmm. I could go to in, in the time I was writing this. And now I think it's just in some warehouse somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not wow. open to the public. But it was very interesting. And uh -huh. I, I did a lot of research, and um, that helped me get uh, a lot of the details right. Because I was not living in the hate at the time. That you weren't. No. You're just I, spelling I, a myth for me. This is my own. The question I knew would come. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to say, is that you? I wasn't <laughs> going to. <laughs> no. Well, it certainly wasn't about me. Uh-huh. Um, and I, wasn't, I, I did pass through the hate in 67. Uh, uh-huh. But by then, it was a whole different thing. So this is after. Thing. Yeah, it yeah. was a whole different thing. That's right. Um, no, but my feeling was that all over the country there were little hate ashburys happening. And mine, mm -hmm. particular one, was in St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, there was a little hate ashbury in Boston, and New York had the East Village, and every mm -hmm. city, Chicago, 
I think it was around Old Town. Uh, mm -hmm. it w there was a little scene happening in every city that went through the same changes on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So I could relate to it in that sense. Mm -hmm. Now, I should also say that when I was, at, 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 in those years, if you called me a hippie, I would be insulted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just as nowadays, you, you don't call someone a yuppie, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. it's sort of an insult. And yet, mm -hmm. looking back on it, maybe they'll say, oh, I was a yuppie. Uh, now, at the time, a hippie was an insult. And pe if someone called me that, I'd say, no, mm -hmm. I'm not a hippie. That's the, those other people over there. Mm -hmm. and well, it was a media. Yeah. It was a media invention, in a sense. I mean, to say, oh, he's to that kind of a label, I think. Yeah, well, it was a put down. Yes. And nowadays, I find myself telling people, you know, I. I, I was a hippie, you know, was, mm -hmm. I'm volunteering the information, I'm saying, you know, I, I want to be identified with it because I, I like a lot of the things that mm -hmm. came out of it, mm -hmm. and I wish in a way we went back to it, leaving out, you know, some of the drug abuse, but... Uh, what do your kids think about you being a, a self-avowed or self-acknowledged hippie? Oh, they tolerate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make it a big deal with yeah. them. Um, yeah. You, know, you walk a fine line with kids. Uh, with anything, yeah. Like um, in fact, it's kind of what I got into with in Boone Barnaby. That mm -hmm. was kind of like a discussion that could have happened in my house, where mm -hmm. the, 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 the Boone discovers that his father was used to smoke marijuana. Um, that's that's a conversation that probably is happening in millions of households around this country mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, how do you deal with that? Yes, uh, I've had the conversation <laughs> with my my step nephew. Yeah, because right. you want to be very honest, and and it's a different picture of that now. Think, mm -hmm. than it was at that at the time when you and I were coming of age. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you, you, if you want to admit it and be honest about it, and, uh, and then on the other hand, in this day and age, it's hard to admit it and be honest about it, you know? I'm, by, by admitting it on television, I'm blowing my chance to be a Supreme Court justice, you know? You haven't and, and really <laughs> said anything yet. <laughs> okay. You haven't really said anything yet. <laughs> be discreet. Yet. Be discreet. You can still become a Supreme Court justice. I also read your book, Son of a Poet, your book of poetry. And I found that, um, I mean, to me, again, I'll interpret what I thought that it was, was a book of poetry about being a father and about your, your children. And I thought that it showed, I mean, it must be in a way difficult for me to, for you to have me talking about it, because I find that a very personal book, you know? These it was. Per very personal. I'm, I'm surprised you got it, because it was hardly, uh, I, I sort of withdrew it from distribution. I interlibrary loaned it. Oh. <laughs> because... Huh. I was afraid it would embarrass my family after mm -hmm. I got it out and um, decided this, I just would give it to friends mm -hmm. and sort of there's a pile of them sitting in my attic mm. and that's about the main distribution of it. Uh, it. It is very personal and I hope my children will understand. Um, when I wrote it, I, I, made it, I made a decision. I was just going to be honest. I, I wasn't going to hide it. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, and and um, I think the first poem in the book makes that pretty clear. Um, I'm mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. I, 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 I just wanted to lay it all out there and I, maybe I, I laid it all out a bit too uh, frankly because <laughs> now, I, now I'm, I, I, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with uh, having, having it in bookstores. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I'm happy to have friends mm -hmm. read it. I'm happy you read it actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People, people who People who appreciate poetry and appreciate mm -hmm. art can understand, um, you know, can, can understand that you can write about something that's very personal and yet, in a way, it's not personal. In, in the very act of writing about it, you change it mm -hmm. and you're dealing with a more universal issue than just mm -hmm. what's personal. And what I'm trying to do is universalize and, and use my own specific life mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to, to create universal things, which is what poetry is all about. You take a specific thing and you try to find universal meaning in it. Mm -hmm. um, and people who can understand that, I'm, happy, I'm very comfortable to have read it. I'm not comfortable having um, strangers read it who don't understand poetry, who mm -hmm. think it's all you know, self-confession, right. which maybe some of it is and maybe some of it isn't. Uh, you know, you, in the act of writing, things change. I, I can turn something completely around if, if uh, and I'll still tell about it in the first person as if mm -hmm. it was true, as if it really happened. Mm -hmm. But I'm, it might be the exact opposite of what happened. You know, right. I might I might have had something happen to me where where I I don't like the way I handled it, mm -hmm. it that it felt bad to me. So in in rewriting it, I'll handle it a different mm -hmm. way. And um, 
It's one of the beauties of writing. Yeah. You can rewrite your history. Rewrite my bit. history. Yes. Yeah. Well, what I was I think about that book though is that it it sh shows such an acute, uh, which is also what I think you do in these books, has you have this acute power of observation, I think, and this tremendous respect, again, for the children who I believe are your children in the Book of Poetry, and also an awe of them that I liked very much. I like that sense of just this mystery of childhood, and that leads me to what is probably going to have to be my last question, which is, it seems to me today that you, I believe you have faith in kids. I, I watched you today with the students from Petrero Hill, and I see your, all of the books we've mentioned. It seems to me that the media, however, gives us a picture of ominous teenagers on the loose. And I fear that we are creating a picture of our teenagers that is, an that is not, in fact, true. Well, sure. Anything to say about I get frightened that. to death reading the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, I read about, you know, kids shooting kids and guns in schools and knives mm -hmm. and horrible stuff. And then I go to schools and mm -hmm. it's not like that, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but it's the old situation. You know, the, what's news is, 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 is the shootings, not the everyday mm -hmm. miracles that are going on in, in schools. Mm -hmm. I love visiting schools. I love being with kids. Um, I, I wish there was a school where I could just be a writer in residence and just have my office there, you know, because mm -hmm. it stimulates me. I, I get so many mm -hmm. ideas and, and my writing is so much clearer. I don't have to stop and think, get myself in the right frame of mind when I'm around kids. They, they just put me in that frame of mind. Fortunately, I have my own kids, but they're growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and they know you very well, too. They know I mean, me very well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have that sort of directness of, of kids who don't necessarily know you and who will tell you what they think, too, I think. Yeah, well, that's why it's good for me to meet a bunch mm -hmm. of, to speak mm -hmm. to a group, in, either in a library or in a school, because mm -hmm. my way of speaking is to try to get them to ask mm -hmm. questions and interact with me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I get as much from it as they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, in our last moments, could you tell me what some of the children's books that you found once you started reading to your kids were that you liked? Can you, mm. am I putting you on the spot there all of a sudden? Mind. to think totally I know. blank. <laughs> um, Let's see, did you, I'm trying to think if you mentioned anyone. I like Gary Paulson's books. Uh -huh. I like Judy Bloom's books. Mm -hmm. um, now, what is that wonderful book about that boy? Uh oh, now I'm uh, going to be on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that boy who, who gets in a toy car and, and goes. The Phantom Tollbooth. Phantom Tollbooth. Yes. Wonderful book. Yeah, a uh, writer would um, like that book, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my kids all love it. They yeah. say it's the greatest book in the world. And why can't <laughs> I write like that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I like a lot of oldies. Uh, mm -hmm. I like um, Treasure Island, yeah. and I like uh, Tom Sawyer, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. I, I, every time I go to the library, I find new books. There are new books being published every day that I like. Um, it's wonderful. I don't know how I missed them when I first started reading to my kids. Yeah. It's having <laughs> the kids, I think, that helps you grow into, into finding what those books are. Mm -hmm. And you have a sequel coming out also to this. So I'll leave our readers with that thought, that there is a sequel coming out to Danny Ain't and to the Adventures of Boone Barnaby. And I thank you, Joe, very much. It's and been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for listening again to Author Talk.